From Dallas, Fort Worth, Denton, it's anything you ever wanted to know. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Whittington. Todd tweeted me and says, I'm looking for information on the old Marvel comics given away uh, in the Dallas Times Herald in the 1980s. And I'm looking for information for a research project. Sanger Harris was a Dallas-based department store, and they are no longer around anymore, but there was one in almost every major mall in the area. The Sanger Harris promotional comics, Marvel went to all these department stores and said, do you want to promote, you know, kids' clothing that you sell through these comics? Sanger Harris ads on television and radio were just ubiquitous. It was just part of the background noise of everyday life. Today's day for his leisure life. You can always tell a Sanger Harris man. And then they worked a deal with uh, a newspaper to give the comics away, but the paper gave out the comic to promote the, the department store, and then when you went in the department store, you had all these big cutouts of the, of the Marvel characters. These are all life size or bigger. Thor was the largest one produced. It was really unique to go into a department store and see comic book character art and you know cutouts of Spider-Man and the Hulk there. This, that was not something we expected for the time. These have all been in storage for a long time, so they need to be kind of dusted off, so they might look a little better if they were dusted. But they did a full interior page. Spider-Man arriving in, in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Here is the actual comic book cover. And you see in both of these, the Sanger Harris store is featured. Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk in a special back-to-school edition from Sanger Harris. Uh, advertisement supplement to the Dallas Times-Herald. There were two major newspapers in the Dallas area. The Dallas Morning News, uh, which is still around, and the Dallas Times Herald. And the Times Herald was a long running newspaper, well respected in the area. And so, you know, they're kind of sadly missed in, in some ways. 7481414, call the Dallas Times Herald for That commercial. That jingle has probably not been on the air for, I don't know, 30 years at this point, probably nearing 40, but 7481414, 7481414, get results like you've never seen before. I'm never going to get it out of my head. The characters like Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man wasn't in uh, a dozen blockbuster movies, so you could just put him in all these ads and no one really bats an eye and a small newspaper could afford to make this deal. Whereas uh, nowadays, that's just not a thing that's going to happen. You know, the Dallas Times Herald was really big at that time until it closed in 91. So that was, that was the other go-to paper and, and getting a, like an actual full comic book. I, it was just a fun experience and it was a standard, well done comic. And the story was built around wherever, whatever city, in other words, the Marvel characters came to Dallas, or they came to Denver. You know, there were several cities around the country, but some of the big markets didn't have them. They seemed to be more in the middle markets of the time. This project was also produced in other cities, and they used local landmarks there as well, instead of just repurposing the same stories over and over. Everybody got their own special story. And this area had so much to offer, we ended up with four or five different books because we had that many different things. Your favorite superheroes, the Hulk, the X-Men, Captain America, they were all having adventures in Dallas. And for a little kid who was probably about seven or eight, that was exciting that maybe I'd run into them. They took some vacation from New York City and they came down to Dallas to hang out and, and check out all the local sites. If you see Sanger Harris depicted and inside Sanger Harris depicted, and I think some of the story actually takes place maybe in Sanger Harris. So, you know, that was all good for the, for the store's business. I was a little kid and of course my parents read the newspapers and I usually just read it for the comics at that point. And I remember the issue that really sold me was the one where Spider-Man is reaching out 
and he's being tackled and it's it's with the Dallas Cowboys and I just remember that being so exciting that that Spider-Man of all people was in Dallas at least in this comic book. The Dallas Cowboys were big. They at that time were known as America's team. One of the most popular football franchises in the entire United States. So having Spider-Man come to town, he's going to have to meet him. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders outfits have changed over the years, but this is what it was in the early 80s. So uh, there was one of, the Mar one of the Marvel comics done for Sanger Harris had uh, featured the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, and they kind of guessed in the comic, and this is the cutout for that. There were a couple of these promotional comics that were specifically geared for Christmas. Uh, one of them featured Spider-Man and Kingpin, and it was a typical comic book Spider-Man story. Could have been in almost any one of his regular issues. This was followed up by another one that was specifically uh, geared to the new cartoon that was on, which was Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, which had Firestar and Iceman in it. And that one, was uh, the three of them at the Dallas Nutcracker Ballet. Which I, I thought was funny just because they're all, you know, especially that cover, they're all kind of like uh, in the rafters watching the show down below. And so there's a story in the beginning that is all three of them and action adventure, Spider-Man kind of story. And then it's followed up with just a comic book adaptation of the Nutcracker, lovely artwork and very reminiscent of the classics illustrated books. The, of all the ones that came out in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the, the one with the X-Men is, is obviously the biggest of the... People come from all around to go to the Texas State Fair. And when the X-Men came, that was a big deal. Again, it was just really cool thinking that maybe Wolverine and Cyclops were, this is like their, their staging battleground where they were going up against Magneto. <laughs> You know, Professor X said, the state fair is just too big to see in one day. Like, really? Come on. Like, it's not like you have to go on every ride. Like, yeah, the state fair is pretty big and it's awesome. But, I mean, the, it, you can tell they're trying to sell you the experience. Uh, but it's still, like, really cool because of how specific it is. You see a bunch of people that are fans of Texas and t fans of OU. So it, it's cool that they did their research and, you know, really uh, made it something that is evocative of what it's trying to evoke. So Equus is the mutant that only shows up in this comic. I, I think Professor X calls him a centaur at one point, but like this dude's basically evocative of the Pegasus, which there's a lot of Pegasus iconography history in Dallas. So I'm sure they probably drew a little local inspiration for that particular character. But it's actually a perfect fit that Dallas's mutant is, is a Pegasus because that's something that is very near and dear to Dallas Side's hearts basically ends with Big Tex literally kicking the butt of the bad guy at the end, uh, which is just, it's so goofy, but also so Texas and so state fair. It's weird to try to imagine it ending any other way. But I, I think as fun as the stories were, it's really fun seeing a lot of those old classic ads because you see Spider-Man hawking like Morgan Boots. Most of the time you're reading a comic book, you're not gonna see an ad for a mall that's right down the road from where you live. And these books, Redbird Mall was visited here. We've got uh, Morgan Boots over here. Um, there's even an ad for local television station, Channel 21. Spider-Man could tell you could buy a TV for $400 on Spidey Super Savings. To see these characters that are very beloved talking about these local brands, many of which don't exist anymore, uh, is kind of crazy. A lot of people have no interest in comics. They don't see comics as, especially back then, didn't see comics as valuable. So, I mean, it, the comic to a lot of people would be nothing more than a Sunday flyer from some retailer and it would just go in the trash. So very few copies that were actually distributed survived. You know, it's, it's a bit of that hometown pride, but it's also just like being able to see something familiar. Like, oh, that's the Cotton Bowl. Like I actually see that at least once a year. And so that like, just gives you this deeper personal connection to this story. You know, it was, it was a nice snapshot and I, I can read through those old issues again and it really elicits a lot of happy memories of that time and just kind of being a kid looking at the skyline waiting for Spider-Man just in case to swing by. Mm -hmm.